of bringing routes through footfall. This is the old bridge um, through Waverley Station, which was taken down in 1965, but preserved the route off, um, off the end of Deer Street, Roman route right the way through down to Leith. Leith wind, um, the church was there, the, the Trinity Apse was demolished and then moved up into the, into the Storytelling Centre site there. So by bringing that bridge back, does that make that car park site far more usable? Because that all different levels of Edinburgh thing starts to work. So this is us just looking at open squares, uh, office uses on the squares, residential uses down below, maybe a hotel, options for there. And I know the council is working hard to try and get network rail who are not very good at exploiting the resources, but to get them to pay attention to this. Um, so three levels of car park underneath, so you get even more car park and then all the amenity of all those squares and all these higher levels above. Also thinking about what happens to Carlton Gate now, and I know the council would like the whole site and everything to be built as was. I think the world has changed so much that that's not necessarily going to happen. And I continue to try and persuade the council, this bit of Carlton, Carlton Gate, which isn't theirs, is the dull bit, the not so easy to develop bit. And this bit, which is the council's, is the far, far better bit. Imagine if that was redeveloped. Imagine if, if and when the Scottish Literature Quarter happens there, that the routes through here start to get more used, that the scoop hall through the station, that, these, that this site comes alive, that your initiative here bears fruit in bringing other sites alive. This becomes really important. More offices for you in terms of overflow or selling on, active uses along the ground floor, and then um, Canongate School, as part of the literature stuff that's happening here, there is a group that would like, that think they can use that building. I've got publishers interested, a publisher that went to Bradford, that used to be in Edinburgh, that would like to come back with community uses. Does that work well with other things? Actually, is a, just a good use of the council's existing building doing that sort of stuff. And I know, well, the world has changed. People need to do that. And I think the council is doing that much, but is doing that well. I know I've been allowed to show you this, which we've done a very little feasibility study. I was paid £350, thank you very much. And I've done about three weeks' work for that, so I think that's 10 pence an hour. Just looking at moving the collective gallery from Coburn Street, which can return to a retail use, uh, up to the old observatory. And I just think that that's a wonderful marriage again. It's one of these moments where you go, Eureka, because it feels so good. And not only would they occupy the building and the old city dome, but actually it's got this really strong wall around it, so the whole site becomes a gallery. And they're very experimental artists that work there. What they would do with engaging with the flanking walls as a gallery, engaging with land art within that space itself is wonderful. So that's a really important reuse of an existing building, of course, it's good news for the council. As is, I was really pleased to see the Gaelic School thing going through at Boddington. Um, that makes use of an old building, brings it alive, as well as uh, housing a very important uh, city institution. And then another project I'm doing with the council, and I think, again, is absolutely the right thing to do. This, these sites down in, down in Grant, and that's the old lighthouse, because of course the foreshore used to be all the way up to there. Nothing's really happening around there, so if nothing's really happening, if this isn't all going to be bulldozed because the world has changed, isn't it? Maybe that's actually a good thing because incremental development is better. I really like the fact that this has got a wee courtyard around it. And there are other good buildings with little courtyards in it. We're looking at, uh, with the council, looking at uses, users, how the integrity of the existing buildings and the way they enclose space, could that be slowly improved with other spaces, uh, enclosing the same sort of courtyards. So it's not a everyone out, bulldoze, do something new. It's working with existing users, uh, building more space elsewhere. Are some very noisy ones that want to move elsewhere? Are others some that would like um, the boxing club, I think, might like a space in there? That sort of thing. So it's that incremental use understanding existing value. And does this get a wee slightly arty uh, uh, community? I know that there has been an arty community in there already that spreads value out all around. So that's just some thoughts on how that can then um, make this, this lovely building, because that's the old customs house, 
uh, which feels very alone now, but pushing the building out there, make a wee square there, continue around to Granted Square itself, which is what part of what the area development frameworks say is should be the heart of the neighbourhood. Very simple little things. I'm working with a local community group, but um, at uh, Bridge End Farmhouse, this is a building I think it's surplus for you. Uh, they want to work with doing, uh, for instance, doing um, occupational therapy classes with people from the hospital because there's a um, allotments behind and all those sorts of things. So again, that seems to me to be the good use. Schools, I'm not so sure where we are. I criticise schools in general because I do good work with old buildings. I get invited to see council buildings in the middle of their communities and people say to me, what can we use this for? And then look at the lovely stonework, the huge amounts of light, the building that's in the middle of its community and I say this would be a great school. Uh, and this, the community's gone and built this outside the catchment area, etc. So I've done this work with Baranier, and I don't know where we are with this, but um, I think this is a building that's got hundreds of years left in it, where we've shown that we can uh, uh, include, we can glaze over the light wells, we can add space that doesn't overlook anything or doesn't overshadow anything, we can get a third more space than site that absolutely needs the curriculum for excellence, and there's the sort of drawings which show those spaces with breakout space in them, with gathering space in them, um, and I think this could, this could be an example of a tight urban school that we use as the existing building. Now, of course, we know, well, uh, I know that the, the council is now buying, um, or wants to buy, Fountain Bridge, and I think that's a straight, that's very strange to me. The, well, when I, and I've been five years in this, when I've done all the discussions with parents before, they were absolutely adamant that the bottom line is that the school should be on the main bus route through the catchment area, and that's not at 700 metres off the bus route. So I'm not sure that it's very good for parents up here. And I really don't see why the council should be spending all that money on a new site when we have a site that works here. But my bottom line is, we make a great site for a temporary school while we do the decamp from this main building here. Um, sometimes things don't go well. We don't understand what's happened. We did this Medelvic site here. Um, we used the historic, this is the world's first car, Britain's first car factory, with a big building to the north, which had lovely views, back up town, full of balconies. These are the two historic buildings, turn them into townhouses, this is the space between. We should have made them more colony style, smaller flats in them, it would have worked. That's the layout, and I like the fact that the layout we got, because we kept those as very like an old town close, big buildings to the market, closest coming back. And of course, uh, because of the market, the building, the site doesn't stack up anymore. And it gets blamed on the historic buildings. If you look at how much land is vacant here, is it really these two buildings that are stopping this land being developed? It's not, it's the condition. It's basically financial conditions, so I get unhappy when the last remaining old buildings on the site are somehow the whipping boy for what's happened to the market rather than um, just something else that's happened. I, feel, I continue to feel bad about what's happened with Craig Miller. These were great, and, and all I'm saying is these things shouldn't happen anymore. We should not forget that we've done the wrong thing here. These are good 1930s tenements. They have real integrity. They didn't have enough insulation. But just because the people there didn't have jobs, we took it out on the buildings, we knocked them all down, we knocked down, or we wanted to knock down some lovely schools. Of course, we did that on the back of the fact that the housing market was going to balloon forever and going to pay for new council housing here. That's obviously not happened, so we need to learn those lessons. And indeed, we need to learn the lessons of what's happened down at the waterfront. And uh, these are not great places to live. This is density, but without immunity. And I continue to feel that the master plans at four ports is produced. This is for Leith, that's for uh, a New ha that's for New Haven, and that's for Granton. These are these are not good master plans. Um, and we know we're supposed to think this is wonderful because a classicist, Robert Adam, has done master plans. That's not his real name, by the way. He changed it by deep hole. I played the saxophone, I could have changed my name to John Coltrane. And he'd be a great saxophonist. <laughs> these, these are, just because he's got a wee bit funny finial and some pediments on here, they don't make that any different from Platinum Point. I know the council.